So uh, then maybe first of all, it looks like my, the subject of my talk uh, not quite fitting in, in the scheme of this conference. It's mostly devoted to to higher category, but mostly to large dimensional topology. But in, in, in reality, in fact, it's tightly related. And moreover, kind of my, my opinion in general is that uh, synthetic topology in general, in high dimension, it's a, a kind of right generalization of low dimension so, so in, in dimensions three and four, there is a kind of enormous intertwine between symplectic structure, contact structure, and low dimensional topology. It's almost kind of like nowadays, it's almost impossible, as you already seen from many talks, to, to just study uh, this topological object without any kind of regard to, to this symplectic uh, feature. And in high dimension, uh, things diverge, and uh, topology become kind of much more trivialized in some sense, kind of lose a lot of wonderful features which has a low dimension, but, but synthetic topology doesn't. And so, so that's kind of like what, if, if, if whether the all synthetic, all, all low dimension topology is done, then I think that all low dimension topology should move to this synthetic topology high dimension. <laughs> So um, there's a, also kind of another uh, thing which kind of I think wonderfully goes in large dimensional topology and symplectic topology in general that there is a extremely which really for, for me from for many years the kind of was the most exciting thing in, in symplectic world that there is a kind of flexible world and rigid world and they they live very close to each other and kind of you, you never know in advance if it's kind of this certain property is flexible or rigid. So an uh, example of this is there is a kind of a lot of subtle invariant of symplectic manifold, but on the other hand there is a, some H principle type statement, uh, uh, for instance like uh, H principle for Lagrangian immersion, but kind of extreme rigidity for Lagrangian impending, etc. And uh, kind of similar thing happened in low dimensional topology. So, so for instance, we have this, I would say, H principle type statement, which is a Max uh, Poincare uh, conjecture theorem. And uh, then there is a kind of rigidity statement, which is when you go to smooth world. So, and the closest kind of object which I would say the most topological in, in, symplectic, in symplectic topology is what I call Weinstein manifold. So let me first give kind of formal definition and then kind of first maybe it's not so inspiring if you've never seen this, but then I kind of explain what, why, why it's important and why, why, why it's kind of topological. <coughs> so, so we have a, uh, we start with uh, this manifold, uh, it's a, say, two-dimensional manifold, and uh, in fact, emphasis today will be that n is greater than two, but we have this two-dimensional manifold, and on this two-dimensional manifold, we have a, a synthetic structure, and in addition, you have a, the following extra structure. You have a, some vector field Z, and this vector field Z has this property that that uh, it's expand symplectic form. So it's a kind of if you integrate in integrate this vector field and, and you just multiply our form by e to the t. And so this is a uh, so this is a by the way kind of equivalent just to the fact that if I contract uh, this form with omega get some one form lambda, then this lambda is a primitive omega. So, so such vector fields, which are called new view vector fields, they are dual to primitive synthetic form. So in particular, of course, this means that X is non-compact, should be, and omega should be exact in such a thing exists. So, uh, um, but this, this by itself, this triple, this is property called new view manifold, but we have a little bit more structure. We have a, some function, some morph function on the manifold, and you want, want this most function to be exhausting, so kind of going to uh, bounded <coughs> below and going to plus infinity, at infinity. <coughs> and you want this vector field Z, V, 
be uh, gradient like for this part. So, uh, so, so whatever it means, I just mean that d field of z is greater than zero uh, away from critical point. And you want a little bit, a little bit of condition in critical point that doesn't matter. So, so this is a, uh, so, so this is, this is, I call this kind of quadruple, I call Weinstein stretch. So, also, kind of one kind of technical condition, I also then want this vector field complete, so that means that I want this flow exist for all time. So, uh, when you have a two Weinstein manifold, then you can consider some kind of uh, more theoretic question about this. For instance, uh, can we have a, if we have some Weinstein structure, and can you, can you for instance, kill uh, most or some critical point of this function? What, what are constraining critical points of this function we have for, for, for such things? So, in particular, we can kind of look at the family of such things. We can have a, we can discuss Weinstein homotopy. So what one is important feature of Weinstein homotopy is that Weinstein homotopy always cannot change symplectic structure. So if you have a homotopy of Weinstein structure, then the corresponding symplectic manifold remains sim just sim uh, symplectomorphic. Uh, we can uh, cover it by isotopy of, of um, Synthetic form, so it's kind of equivalent to consider homotopy of Einstein structure on the same symplectic way. So I can vary omega or not, and that's that thing. So, so now you can kind of look at, at this uh, from the point of view, like, like more of a topological picture. So let's, let's, take a, let's take a critical point and look at the, because we have this vector field, we can consider stable manifold. Uh, stable manifold for, for the vector field Z of some critical point of, of, the, of this function P. And it's very easy to see that this stable manifold has to be isotropic, so symplectic form on this stable manifold of, of, the, of this point has to vanish. And this is because, kind of this pretty obvious, because uh, our vector field acts by contraction, by expansion. Extensive, expensive effective form, but on the stable manifold, they have to contract it, and so therefore the only solution of this alternative is that it's actually zero. So therefore, symplectic for the, all of them are isotropic. So also kind of another important feature of symplectic manifold that if you consider level set of this function, and you take this uh, one form kind of lambda, which is a dual, to, to Z and restrict to, to this level set, then this is a contact form. So every, every level set canonically contact me. And what, what, what happens is that you have this critical point and you have this stable manifold, this stable disk from this critical point, and they are attached to the level set along spheres which are uh, also isotropic in the sense of this context structure, so they tangent to the context structure. So in particular, in particular, we have that uh, kind of in, what, what, what we conclude that well, indexes of indices of all critical points they have to be no more than half. So in particular, the attached sphere are <coughs> at most n minus one dimensional and. They are isotropic for context structure. So for instance, like in critical index, index M, they are what is called Lagrangian. So you have a, the, the disks themselves Lagrangian and the spheres are Lagrangian. And so you can look kind of look at the whole this, whole this uh, kind of uh, thing as a uh, very much topological kind of construct. So you, you just start thing who kind of build our uh, Weinstein manifold by just attaching handles as this symplectic handle body. So first, and in fact, you can just easily to prove that in, in this uh, context of such Weinstein manifold, the standard topological technique of handling Morse function works. So there is a, you can, for instance, always re rearrange 
critical points according to their index, and <coughs> you, you can get the separation by candlelight, cancellation, and kind of con uh, condition for this exactly the same. For instance, if you manage to have a two critical points of neighboring index and you have a stable and stable manifold which intersect at one point, then in this class we also can cancel them. And so the only one, only kind of difference and only kind of extra feature than when you do this kind of, kind of slight and whatever, you, you're moving, moving stable manifold, you have to make, uh, uh, do this by, uh, by this, uh, pr preserving this property as uh, a trophy. For instance, the, the critical thing, the, it should be Legendrian as a topic. So this kind of the word of this has to be designed as a topic is the kind of the only symplectic feature in the whole this topic. So uh, now you have a so, so you, 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 you so you build this you build this symplectic kind of body and well and as I said you can order them according according to the index and up to some some moment this is the critical point of index less than n. And, and then you attach, attach kind of what's most interesting thing, you can simultaneously attach all handles of index n. So this manifold, which is kind of uh, on this side, I call it subcritical. So subcritical, subcritical manifold, that means that all indices of critical point strictly less than n. And subcritical, it's kind of well known, the sub subcritical uh, manifold is a pure, uh, pure topological creature. There's a absolutely no symplectic topology of them because for the this, the main thing is that when you take this uh, attaching sphere, they are isotropic and kind of below critical Legendrian dimension. And in this case, as I said, uh, because this uh, flexible and rigid will come very close, that there is a Gromov theorem which it proves some kind of H principle for this thing, so that means that provided there is a topological isotopia and some kind of covered by certain kind of bundle uh, condition, then you can everything kind of what you want realize. Yes? But the ascending spheres are high dimensional. So ascending ascending sphere dimensional, but the kind of I don't care. Oh. So but in for for no, but uh, you, you mean you mean for, for, for cancellation for this right, one? Right, right. Yeah, but but you know you always can arrange arrange the uh, right intersection by moving one of them. So, so, so basically, smooth wavy tricks can be covered with the right angle. Yes, yes, and every, everything that you see that like yes. So there's, there's a, exactly so like what we what we of course need we need this kind of hidden trick to to to, to work at. And after we go to, to this middle dimension, when the, the things are each other, there's absolutely no problem with this and everything. So, so, now, so now this kind of interesting thing happened happen in this, in this moment. So, so that, let, let's kind of uh, look a little bit at this picture. So we have this uh, subcritical Weinstein manifold with this, uh, say, uh, contact contact bubble. For instance, if you, if you were in four dimension case, the, the subcritical uh, manifold would be just uh, connected some of this S1 cross B3 and, and uh, in fact contact structure of the boundary will be standard contact structure on connected some of S1 cross S2. And then you uh, we have a now Legendrian link realized by, by, by the thing. And now things become very sad. Because for, for as I said, the kind of you everything, all kind of our topological kind of desirable move should be done via the Sijan and Azotopy, and there is a plenty of abstraction for Rajan and Azotopy as well. Known. So let me kind of recall is this uh, no, okay. So uh, for instance, there is a the following equation you can describe the one invariance and kind of uh, for this. So, uh, so, so one of the kind of way of. Uh, <coughs> so by, by the way, like for uh, you can have the following mental image for, for this picture. So as I said, the subcritical manifold kind of is not so interesting object. Well, let's just 
let's assume for simplicity that actually this is completely trivial. So there's no kind of nothing, nothing inside, and just think things that it, it, it will be completely irrelevant for what I say, but kind of easy to understand. So, so you can think that this is a sphere of rather, rather just are, are So you take a just Euclidean space R to n minus 1, and in R to n minus 1, we have this legend of <coughs> and the count manifold is obtained by attaching this hand. So just let, let's kind of just look of invariance of, say, the and links in R to n minus 1. So as I said, this is a kind of, uh, it's not really any constraint, it's just kind of simplicity of presentation. So, so then, uh, Calgary, so, so, see, so this F, so you can think that standard structure code uh, is, uh, Standard, the context structure is standard, so you have a dz minus some y i dx i from a one to n minus one. And then each legend, and so there is a so, so there is a, some canonical direction which is called red vector field. In this case it's just d or dz direction. And you can consider this projection of this legend and not to uh, perpendicular R to n minus 2 of this yx, and you get an immersed Lagrangian sphere. And so this, uh, this immersed Lagrangian sphere, but this is immersed Lagrangian sphere look like not diagram because there is some kind of intersection. Well, this plus minus is the intersection point. And so, and then kind of looking at this picture, you can define some what is called Lagrangian homology algebra, and this algebra is generated by this, by, as a generator by, by this intersection point, and, well, which has certain grades, including some massless indices, and differential, differential of this, on this algebra <coughs> is defined by counting certain, certain holomorphic disks. And so this holomorphic disk, has, uh, well, in this kind of setup, required to, to have, uh, say, one positive function means there is this plus and minus. It requires to have one positive function and, and kind of many negative functions. And then you interpret as a DCI is equal product of this uh, whatever. Okay. And so, so, so this is a you, so you define differential using kind of this count and, and um, Miracle that this square is equal to zero, and, and homology of this algebra is invariant with the general metatopic. So this kind of one of the invariants. And this invariant, in fact, can be carried out to, to define certain invariant of the resulted uh, symplectic map. So for instance, uh, you can define some, something which is called symplectic homology of the manifold X by certain uh, algebraic construction out of, out of this algebra. So you have this algebra, which I, is this Legendre homology algebra of this link, Legendre link, or of this, so this lambda 1, lambda k, this link of the Legendre sphere, spheres, and <coughs> then this uh, symplectic homology can be computed according to the theorem of Bourgeois form and myself. It can be computed as follows. So you take, take this out. And out of this algebra, you, you consider the following object. You, you, can, you just write elements of this algebra on, on the circle. And one of these kind of vertices just put some head of this. And this head operation is just increased uh, grading by one. And also, you are allowed to, to have some special kind of special extra symbol you add. You you are allowed to to add to, to have a special vertex to be this x. And on this, so you have this complex. And on this complex, there is a naturally uh, uh, defined. Uh, Differential and differential on, on, on usual vertex is kind of you, you're just adding our old holomorphic disk. But on, on the special ob object, you're also adding holomorphic, holomorphic disk, but then and you make one of these vertices special. And you take a sum of all such things. 
<laughs> so this is a, so, so you, you, get, you get this object, so let's call this kind of some, uh, some mm, uh, complex M, but by this, but you, you have to say something which you do with X, uh, but something simple. And you get this complex M, and this complex M, its homology turns out to be the same as what the person said to more in particular, this is invariant of the many what you get up. And moreover, this thing is a, uh, this thing is a, is a ring on the plate homology. There is a uh, so-called pair of path product which corresponds to quantum pro uh, product in, uh, in the quantum product for quantum product uh, <coughs> in uh, symplectic homology and. Um, And in this term, this operation can be also easily described as follows. That if you take it, we consider the following configuration. Configuration of one disk like this, where you, uh, where you put, uh, kind of on circle, you write three, three, uh, three, uh, so you write three special vertices on, on the boundary and any number of other other negative vertices. And then and then you can say that this disk with two positive vertices, special and any number of negative. And then if you have a, one object like this and another object like this, you glue them and, and you read all the results. So this is the operation of, of in, in this terms of this algebra, the operation how the product on symplectic homology is defined. So anyway, so the, the point is that there is this, this algebra of there are, there are subtle invariants of the genre nodes, and the subtle invariants, in fact, some of them become invariants of the resulted manifold, and in particular, you can get a lot of examples when you have a uh, different and just in, in very subtle way, different one Stein structure as a result of the search. So we, we show that there is a no kind of handle slide or nothing will help to, for instance, to, to, to do something. For instance, if, if you know, if, if this manifold is up to end, but you compute, compute this, in, you get some kind of handle body presentation and you compute some homology and you see that it's not trivial for R to end, but for any subcritical manifold, some homology is trivial. Then, then you know that there is no way to cancel all critical points of this function except minimum. Otherwise, otherwise you would uh, you would get something simply tomorphic to it. There's no way to cancel uh, critical points of topic. So first example, by the way, of this type constructed by by Zayden Smith. Okay. So so on one hand we have this, this thing, but then I, I said that. In fact, this flexible and rigid world live extremely close. So let me kind of uh, now move to this flexible direction. Right, yes. So, uh, so you 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 get in there, so you get invariance of symplectic mean. So, so this is a kind of uh, great question because so you, as I said, if you have a homotopic Weinstein structure, then then you get a uh, symplectomorphic manifold. So the invariance symplectic invariance of the manifold are a kind of invariant abstraction to, to Weinstein homotopy, but in principle could be some more subtle abstraction, and we don't know. We don't know any kind of example of symplectic manifold on which we kind of renew like in the same class, kind of formal class, two different non-homotopic. So in the same symplectic manifold, we don't know two examples of non-homotopic like time graph. So this is kind of open problem. So is there a concrete example in uh Yeah, yes, you can compute very, very concrete examples. So, so for instance, right. 
So, so you, you, you have a link which is a Rachel knot, which is uh, which are uh, exactly the same topologically, and, and, and more than that, I don't say, but but still you get a different name. So, uh, so let me return to regard and not for a second. So there is a if you have a contact manifold, and this contact manifold there is a um, uh, there is a chosen Legendrian fibration, for instance, in you can take this standard R to M and take D uh, Z minus y dx form and take a uh, fibration by y subspace subspaces and so you take this projection to this x z space so this is such projection in contact geometry called front projection and you're getting some kind of picture something like this so in one dimensional case in high dimensional case you get some front of, of uh, more complicated nature and in particular, kind of like in any dimension, in particular in one dimension, it's very easy to kind of manipulate this Legendre manifold. For instance, you take this Legendre manifold and you can add something kind of. Well, for instance, if you, if you do something like this, then this is in fact Legendre isotope. Because if you, if, you, if you look at this picture on this Lagrangian, on the projection to, to this uh, xy plane, then that just corresponds to something like this. But for instance, if you do some kind of bifurcation of change from like this, so on Lagrangian plane, it, 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 it gives you this. And in fact, these are not, you cannot get it by Legendrian as well. So any, any Legendrian embedding has certain formal in there. So what are formal in there? So okay, so so what is formal homotopy between two Legendre names? This is just isotopy, topological isotopy, and covered by this kind of Legendre homomorphism on tangent bound. And what are abstraction for this? So in in uh, the Euclidean case, abstraction for this is the following. So first of all, it just means that projection to Lagrangian plane has to be larger uh, to um, uh, symplectic space. This projection along z direction, along, along red direction, uh, should give regular homotopic Lagrangian manifold. And in particular, uh, what are invariant of Lagrangian regular homotopy? It's like there is a uh, gram of Lee theorem, which is an analog of Smell theorem, which says that it's just determined by uh, by the map to, to the complex Stiefel manifold, but in this case, this is just UN. So, when I'm talking about the Jandrian sphere, so therefore this element is, is just element of, well, in this case, of pi n minus 1 of UN minus 1. So, and this is a stable dimension, and so, so this is just 0, well, this is just 0, zero or uh, 0, depending on, on pair. And so there is this one number which is called whatever mass of class or rotation uh, number in for, 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 for this Legendre. But then there is a one more invariant. Like you know, in topology there is this so-called regular isotopic uh, how called, regular isotopic problem. And you can look at the nodes and we want them to, to be projected as immersion to some plane. So so there is a, some extra invariant, and in this invariant in um, Odd in if our Legendre submanifold is odd, it's a z valued invariant, and this is called in one dimension called certain benefit invariant, but there is a, in all dimensions something like this. And there is a, some z2 invariant, the two class of this type in, or in even dimension. And this is our only formal invariant. 
So, so like if you have a if you have a two which are the not and, and existence of formal isotopy just exactly mean existence of uh, well in high dimension there is no kind of problem for topological isotopy. So so equality of these two numbers is just complete complete classification of the formal degenerate model. So it was known for, for, for long time that Legendre, Legendre not become kind of extremely flexi flexible if you if you kind of what is called stabilizer, add them something like this to the picture. And there is a kind of similar operation in high dimension. And what but in dimension three, this is not so kind of interesting operation. Because, well, uh, I mean, this fact, because you don't have a control how much you need to stabilize. You know that you have a two nodes that they formally isotopic, then after certain stabilization, they become legendary isotopic, but maybe you have to stabilize 100 times. <coughs> so what the pretty amazing theorem was proven by my students, Max Murphy. It turns out that in high dimension, you, you, it's sufficient to stabilize once and everything becoming completely flexible. Wow. So let me formulate it here. And so, so, so this is a, the is a following. So let's, <coughs> so let's consider the following, following operation. So let's take a, this is a, some local operation on the Legendre node. So the state takes this Legendre node and locally, because we can think that we have enough to end, and we, we just change this front projection. So, well, we, we can actually always choose, you can always choose front projection and in such a way that it's tangent to Legendre manifold. So, so you can make this uh, like our original Legendre manifold in, in this, that would neighbor could look like this. And kind of similar in high dimension, this would be like the same thing multiplied by R. By R. And then you change our Legendre manifold to change the front like this. So this is kind of analog of the stabilization. So in dimension one, you change invariance, for instance, change. So, so the rotation number is remains the same, but certain benefit invariant change by the twice earlier characteristic of, of this of this interval. So if you do this. And the same true in any dimension. So this operation change this formal invariant by, by, by this earlier characteristic of all this. And there is a kind of great property of of object in high dimension. In high dimension there are many of Ever characteristic, not necessarily positive, but also negative. Right. In one dimension, there is a there is a, this kind of unfortunate fact that we can have a one-dimensional submanifold of, of line. This one-dimensional submanifold has to have positive ever characteristic. But it's it's not true in high dimension, and hence you can just and, and this leads to what in, in dimension one called certain variant inequality. But in high dimension, this, this is not true, so you can arbitrarily change in any dimension, in any direction, by, by the same change formula in there. And in particular, if you do this over some uh, domain of electricity zero, you do not change at all. <coughs> and what? If you, if, 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 I, 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 right, it, it's, yes, it is sometimes kind of twist. Nice it's a bit of twist. And, okay, and so, 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 so let's call, uh, let's call the Sejandre node flexible. <coughs> Just to get now Sejandre node, call it flexible. If you can find some, well, maybe some very big, but standard dark ball, such that inside this dark blue ball, actually, this thing look like this. Like stabilization over some, over anything, doesn't matter what. So actually, if you call it not flexible, but he'll, he's call it slackable. Okay, so it's kind of this, and not the big thing. What? Okay, so, 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 so this is a flexible, 
flexible uh, degenerative manifold, and his theorem that flexible <coughs> flexible Legendrian nodes of dimension greater than one satisfy satisfy <coughs> the H principle. So that means formal isotopy necessary in sufficient condition for Legendrian. So you see, this is a <coughs> you can put this in the perspective with, of uh, <coughs> what I was talking before. <coughs> about this invariance because uh, this legend it, it was all again known since a long time ago that this type of operation in one dimensional case in high dimensional case all of them kill the legend now the legend homology algebra becomes zero and it was so in particular also also for instance if you take a Weinstein manifold and you have this kind of handle body picture, and now you kind of change this attaching sphere by this kind of small twist, then this kills inflective mode. So in particular, in particular, this is one of source, one, one particular source of getting exotic example. You can, for instance, take a cotangent bundle of sphere, so you have a, which you can get by attaching, attaching one uh, Lagrangian handle along trivial Legendrian knots in the sphere. And now you just change it by this by this stabilization procedure, and you get something which kind of topologically looks diffeomorphic of the tangent bundle, but uh, symplectic structure is different because symplectic homology is trivial. So uh, and so there was a kind of question how how much light exist beyond symplectic homology. Because it's like you have a you have a symplectic symplectic homology uh, so you uh, you do this uh, twist you kill symplectic homology but can you distinguish maybe this manifold by something else? And so what I just want to formulate the theorem now kind of which, which can be uh, proven using this thing. Uh, using uh, uh, Murphy's theorem, is that in fact there is also a similar phenomenon for Weinstein -Mann. So there is a very recently there was actually constructed by uh, uh, by Harris, student of Ivan Smith, was a constructed kind of first example of two symplectic manifolds which have trivial symplectic homology but not symplectomorphic. But what I just and what I want to formulate now here is kind of goes in opposite direction. So it's so that if so there is a kind of extremely narrow and small room between this killing of symplectic homology and making manifold completely flexible. And so kind of a very interesting question how much room exactly is there, but but uh, not much. So 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 here's a kind of so, uh, okay, before, before theory, let me give you some definition. Okay, so I would like to define some class of flexible Weinstein. Manifold. So let's, let's call Weinstein manifold flex, Weinstein structure. So we have this Weinstein structure, x, omega, uh, is, uh, z, p. And let's call this Weinstein structure flexible. If you can slice it by some elementary cobordism, such that in, in each of these cobordism, all Lagrangian, top dimensional Lagrangian handles, all of them attach along flexible Legendrian nodes. And in fact, one, there's a small nuance important. That when you have a, there's a, uh, for instance, when you have a link, the flexible link is not a link of two flexible nodes. Because it just means that you want this kind of darbu ball, which I said, to be disjoint from each other for each one. So the, so the flexible link a little bit more than this uh, union of flexible nodes. 
So, so you have this thing kind of attached along along flex, flex, flexible thing. If it's one, then you, you call this Weinstein structure flexible. So this property is completely unclear where this property preserved by the Weinstein homotopy. Actually, I don't know. Maybe it is, but I have I don't know how to prove it. So now, if you have a Weinstein homotopy, then maybe you get some kind of different Weinstein structure, and for this different Weinstein structure, maybe maybe it's not flexible in this sense. But the theorem, kind of which first theorem which I formulate. Uh, yeah. Is that uh, so? Suppose you have a on on given manifold, you have a two uh, one two Weinstein Weinstein structure. So you have a given manifold. You have a two Weinstein structure, which are both flexible. So this is a flexible, flexible structure. Which are formally the same, meaning that there's just if you can consider this uh, let me let me write it this way and by this I mean the following thing. This is just you can say that homotopy class of symplectic form is just as a just two form, not closed form. Which is the same that take a corresponding almost complex structure. So just you want homotopy to this this symplectic form belong to the same class of almost complex structure. The pure kind of homotopy complex. And then flexible structure in the same class, then then they are they n, o, in an extremely important, now, dimension to n, and n greater than 2. It's kind of completely wrong in, in dimension 4. And n great, greater than 2. Then they are, uh, then they are Weinstein, Weinstein homotopic through flexible structure. In particular, they are simply the moon. So this is kind of one, kind of part one, and, and part two, that in fact, uh, on, so, so we have a, if you take a, any manifold, you take a, any the topological manifold, and, and, and we, which has a mod function, so again, the same constraint for, for dimension, and, and we have a, any topological manifold, and we have this is a mod function, mod function without without critical point of index of index greater than n. So it's kind of function which potentially could be this for mm. participating mass size structure, then then there is a compatible compatible uh, compatible flexible Weinstein structure. So any function, any mod function can be realized on, on the given manifold, but also, sorry, this manifold and uh, we just say almost complex manifold. We have an almost complex manifold and we have a mod function, then there is a uh, Weinstein structure compatible with this data. That means that you can find omega and you can find z, such that omega will be in this class and phi will be just this phi. So, so it kind of, it looks like complete, complete flexibility. It's a, it's a, well, for, for those who know that, like, exactly analog of uh, kind of classification of what is the complex structure in dimension three. There is a, this, the same phenomenon in high dimension for this flexible Einstein structure. <coughs> so, okay. So this is maybe partially answer Peter your question. Okay, but uh, now I think I'm, I don't 
really know what because it's always pretty new and I, I don't really know what, 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 what exactly kind of context of this, right context for this. So for instance, there are some <coughs> other flexibility in symplectic manner. Oh, ah, by the way, any any subcritical one sign manifold in particular flexible in this in this, in this uh, definition. So for instance, there is a, the following uh, uh, phenomenon in symplectic manifold discovered by Donaldson that like if you have a, if you have a closed symplectic manifold that this closed symplectic manifold has some kind of symplectic hyperplane section and the complement of the symplectic hyperplane section is automatically this Weinstein method. and moreover if, if this is a kind of if this is some kind of sufficiently high degree uh, class uh, of this, of, of, of this the symplectic manual of this integral of a symplectic form, and, and we consider kind of divider with the class uh, proportion of the symplectic form, and this is, if this degree is sufficiently high, that all of them symplectically are isotopic. So can I wonder, maybe they're symplectically isotopic because their complements are flexible. Maybe this is a kind of, maybe that's kind of the reason for, for all this tonal flexibility is that for the high degree dividers, complement becoming flexible in this sense. <coughs> that, that of course it would follow me this tonal theory. So I, I have no idea whether it's true or not, just question. So then, okay, so, uh, so this is a great question, of course. Well, I, I know such example, but they are kind of a cheating example, because there are examples in kind of algebraic manifold such that complement of divisor is subcritical. So, so this principle that could be, but, but I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe just completely opposite to what I'm saying is true, maybe as soon as we get this flexible, this high dimensional handle, maybe this is impossible by some reason. Okay, so, so maybe I have a few minutes left. Let, let me maybe kind of skip some things. So, how does, for instance, how does Murphy theorem is proved? Well, so, so this, this is kind of, uh, uh, so it, it's amazingly it's kind of proven using very, very standard H principle type technique. So it, it, it's, I explained kind of working with the general manifold is very much like working with, with fronts. And fronts are, look like submanifold with this maybe kind of cusp type uh, single. So let's kind of consider the following pure topological problem. So let's suppose, say, we are in Rn plus 1 or in, in any, in fact, n dimensional, n plus 1 dimensional manifold, and now inside this manifold you have a hypersurface, some embedded hypersurface. And now you, you take it, you take this field of tangent plane to this hypersurface and you start to rotate. So you just take a field of tangent plane and start to rotate it and so on. And the question, can you isotope our manifold such the tangent plane stay close to this one? Can you integrate tangential, tangential isotopic of a given manifold? So if If dimension of this, uh, you see, if I, if, if I have the following kind of easy question. Suppose I take co-dimension 2 submanifold, and then along this co-dimension 2 submanifold, I would take field of kind of tangent, of tangent plane, but n-dimensional uh, tangent plane. So like, for instance, 
This is like surface in R3, but let's consider the case we have a curve in R3, but along this curve we have a field of tangent plane. So then, in this case, this is a kind of part of this drum of directed invading theorem, and which says that this is possible. And of course, obviously, this is cannot be true for co dimension one, mainly, right? So you have a closed, for instance, sphere, and you want to, uh, okay, we can take a torus, for instance, and then in principle, because the tangent bundle trivial, you can rotate all, uh, all planes to be horizontal. But you cannot make torus to be kind of uh, projected without singularity to the plane. But it's true after the following thing. And this is kind of our theorem with Mishachov, that you can kind of prepare slightly our map. So if you just take, a, take our manifold and kind of change it first, kind of to, to this type of map. So like now, so, so you can think about this as say non house door manifold, you just take, or, or you just take this cut, whatever. So take, take this, this cut, so take this topological, topological object, and now, now, at n point, you still have this tangent plane because these branches are tangent. In high dimension, you can do similar picture along, say, two concentric spheres. And so now, what, what you do first, you take your manifold and you, you along bunch of, of some of, of, the, of such sphere, you, you make this bifurcation. And after that, things become completely flexible. Then, then after that, you can prove that uh, actually every two such things are, 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 are you can integrate the general network. And so, so, so this is a um, uh, this is a kind of in the heart of, of this what what, what uh, uh, Marx is doing with the general not, but there is kind of one other important ingredient. So in this. Topological picture, what you have to do, for instance, you, you, you may have to take one of such kind of zigzag and kind of do something else, kind of another such zigzag inside this one. So they, they can be kind of nested. And you cannot avoid this. It's easy to prove that you cannot avoid such things. But in uh, in the genre setup, this kind of Cast of fronts exist only in our imagination. Because Legendre and Manifold are smooth, and this zigzags kind of appear only after we choosing certain projections. And so what turns out to be possible? So so so, so in fact um, what, 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 so, so in this case you cannot like take this zigzag and get out of that. So but in in, in Legendre and set setup it's this is a, in fact, just completely smooth thing. And, and, and uh, what, what you think is that this kind of zigzags exist on kind of different scale. And so therefore, if this zigzag is very small, it kind of can go through this other zigzag. And so there's a pretty subtle construction of this type. And so that's how his, his theorem is proven, and probably also.